Hello, hello, and welcome back, everyone, to Napoleon and Total War as a British. We are coming straight where we left off, as ever, where we have previously beaten back rather a large Spanish army. In fact, their main full-stack army has been pushed away from the Madrid region. Uh, so that does leave a minor army as well as its armed um, citizenry garrison in Madrid to take, and that will pretty much clear up Spain as a major threat to us. However, we may have to put that particular invasion on hold today as, while loading into the game, I have just noticed coming our way um, probably the equivalent of a full French stack here, just a tad over there. So we have Marshal de Vaux um, coming around here all the way down to Toulouse and we have yet another General Jean Rainier over here as well. We can't really see too much over here although we do have some French uh, Marines over here which is rather interesting and some Chasseur Cheval as you should expect. We can also see Napoleon over here with a completely full stack uh, coming our way. So we can see the um, classic Toast of War anti-player bias coming in here very very quickly. Um, not to worry though, if we are able to deal with that, that would be absolutely excellent. We're going to go straight to our agents if that's the case then. Uh, we're going to be rather behind on this. We can't really uh, catch up to this very well at all. We're going to come around uh, this direction here uh, towards Devon and try and hold him off where possible. Um, and we are in the process of actually getting ourselves a second full army over in London, of course. We are currently recruiting one unit of uh, line infantry. We can't uh, afford any more at the moment. However, um, I do want to add in some light infantry. So that would give us another seven slots available after this particular unit is recruited. I think we're fine on cannons and cavalry. So I think we'll go for at least two units of light infantry. Uh, and then, of course, the rest can be standard foot um, you know, fusiliers. So which uh, light infantry do you want to go for? There's not a lot of difference between them really. Um, let's go and look at reload skill for the minute. It's a tad better on the King's German Legion. Uh, what about uh, this one over here? It's okay. So we go for the middling one where we're not limited so much at the moment I think for our standard light foot. Um, however the King's German Legion don't have a greater upkeep cost and they cost the same to recruit, so we might as well go for at least a couple of those where we can. They have the same abilities uh, and passives as the standard Lightfoot, so uh, really we're just getting that extra reload skill off of these people, and that uh, will certainly help out a lot. Compared to standard uh, line infantry, the reload skill, actually that is exactly the same, so that's rather interesting to see there. We can only afford one of those at the minute because that has completely rinsed out our treasury once again. Take a shot. Every time I say that, we are currently also uh, repairing Nelson's Navy as we certainly need to. We are currently blockading Brest over here. We do have a minor French fleet threatening to uh, uh, you know, blockade Bristol once again or even sail up to hit our trade nodes over here, which would be rather, rather nasty indeed. We currently stand on 5.6 thousand income, but that will of course change if we do have any attacks and blockades on our ports and such. It's very interesting to see that Napoleon is coming down uh, our way very directly. As we can see that uh, Austria is actually making a lot of progress for themselves. They've uh, wiped out the Kingdom of Italy and they've made their way to Stuttgart over here, uh, which is absolutely brilliant for them. Uh, we couldn't do that uh, so quickly on our own campaign. So uh, that's largely pr because, quite likely, <laughs> it's been very open. And uh, we can see so many French armies over here in uh, the uh, central France region. So we're going to have to pull back. We do have some replenishment to do. And we're going to be relying on ambushes and the fact that the enemy will be slowed down by the mountainous terrain over here. However, once they do hit this mountainous terrain, we won't be able to see them uh, whatsoever uh, because it is covered in trees and such. So uh, that's the aim for today, just double checking our technology. I'm quite happy going for national census to reduce uh, recruitment costs and increase global tax rates, even if it, it is the tiniest amount there. We might look at uh, some economics or even logistics and field ambulances later on because, um, I sort of, sorry, Army Corps organizations later on uh, because I absolutely love replenishment and reducing upkeep costs. So let's get going to the next turn and see what we can do from there. 
And as predicted, uh, Rise of the Stars this campaign, we are having a Gibraltar under attack here. We'll see how that's actually possibly opened up Madrid there. Uh, we might still want to hold off on that because we'll have to garrison Madrid for quite some time. Uh, but we are going to sacrifice Gibraltar, unfortunately. And there we go. So uh, Bristol's has also been raided, as possibly predicted there, which has very much uh, limited our income over that turn, uh, down to roughly 2,000 or so. Uh, and that's going to be a problem. Uh, this particular navy uh, looks like it's a few frigate-type ships, a few 38 gunners. Uh, we can't necessarily stand up to that as easy as we'd like to with this particular fleet. Um, hmm, I think really... I wouldn't mind getting myself a Razzie. I love Razzies. Uh, very good um, with a, you know, it looks like it says uh, basically a sawn off ship of the line. <laughs> um, very good uh, firepower um, as compared to uh, Briggs. Such are just a little bit tougher um, as well, which is very, very good. Good for our close range brawls. Uh, you do pay for that uh, difference, though, you really do. Um, so I think, in really, at the current situation, I might want to go for a 38 gunner where possible. Um, but unfortunately, it is the land battles which win battles for us. So we're going to go for even more um, land units over here to quickly reinforce Spain because we're going to be in quite the pickle um, if we are left to uh, hold on to that area with just the one army as it stands, unfortunately. Uh, so how do we stand? We do have only two units of truly uh, more elite infantry. I think that would do for now. Uh, so... We want to get six units out in total. That's two, four, or three, or f okay, three there. Mm, let's see, I have four on the tip of my tongue for some reason. So, let's bring down the Fensibles here because their uh, mission was to blockade uh, one of our ports. We can actually force them out with this particular unit of Fensibles here, which we've missed. That would have been quite useful earlier. So now we need to pay to repair. Uh, we have some very simple recruitment, and we have actually constructed our uh, university in Oxford, which is excellent, and we have a magistrate in Barcelona as well that will help with tax and repression, um, and the university is going to help with, uh, of course, uh, cutting down our research times. I believe logistics has just gone down from eight turns to five. That is a massive difference there. We can see um, we have uh, Joachim Murat over here um, to reinforce down here. Let's come down and see where the enemy has moved exactly. Have to move down to this bridge. Yeah, okay, so they're wondering what to do at the moment. They're wondering what to do. You can see Philippe Giron over here. Really wondering what way, uh, what direction the enemy is going to come in here. We have to protect our flank. There's no point in going for Madrid right now because uh, even if we do take this successfully right now, uh, we have to deal with a massive amount of uh, unrest there. So uh, we're going to be causing more problems uh, than we can uh, keep on top of at the moment if we do that. I think uh, for now, do we think they're going to come around the coast over here towards Barcelona? Or do we think the enemy is going to come? There is in fact a road uh, through these mountains over here, so it's possible they'll come through here. I think we're going to lay an ambush in these trees over here to uh, solidly control this mountainous path. That will give us some terrible replenishment, unfortunately, but it's uh, replenishment nonetheless. Uh, and I think if we can bring this spy up so we can see a tad better over there, that would be excellent. And that would give us more power, more options to actually sabotage their army's movement. Not much else we can do this turn. However, what I might do is get some emergency taxes. Um, so... We're going to raise our tax to the maximum, and that will give us... Actually, it's not really going to help, actually, because no one's happy to pay that. That's rather interesting to see there. Hmm. Why is that... Where is the best level to have that, then? Apparently, lower tax is better income so far. <laughs> Maybe we can't get emergency taxes. Why would that be? That's very interesting indeed. Hmm. Apparently normal tax is the most optimum tax. Rather interesting indeed. Uh, the idea there was to raise our taxes to maximum to get the most that we can out of there for just the one turn so that we will get uh, 
uh, you know, for some worker strikes, but once we get that, we can push it back down the next turn to uh, completely evade any unrest there. But that's not going to be the case, unfortunately, because uh, we are going to get more income out of just standard medium taxes, unfortunately. But oh well, what can you do? Let's uh, see what's going on then over the next uh, end turn. This is a very interesting situation. I've not seen the French uh, come down this hard onto a uh, onto the Spanish Peninsula um, so quickly before. Uh, this is very, very new to me. Usually, for me, uh, Spain is very much free game, uh, and the French aren't usually too bothered. They generally start fighting Austria. But, you know, it's probably got to deal with now. Let's get into it. And there we go. Looks like we just about uh, <laughs> guessed correctly there. Very, very happy with that. Uh, we do need to watch out for a couple of our units. We are somewhat battered ourselves. We did take a, some, a bit of a peppering from uh, the previous battle in the last video. Um, and if we do have to fight a second battle this turn, we will have to likely retreat. However, this shouldn't be particularly difficult. Um, they do only have a handful of infantry here, and that should be fairly easy to control. Um, we do have the cavalry to get right on top of the enemy's cannons, but we're going to have to be very, very careful once again. We might even sit out this unit of Light Dragoons, um, because I don't want to take too many casualties on that front. Other than that, let's get going into this ambush battle. Okay, so going into this battle before we press uh, start, let's just um, run over the layer of the land. We have a perfect position here on this uh, very small hill uh, overlooking the enemy's deployment zones. So we've set up our cannons in the best position we can, and we are going to protect those with just a couple units of line infantry on either side so that we do enclose the enemy over here. We have a mirrored four units of line infantry on this particular flank over here so we can just sandwich the enemy in and to make sure they don't escape we do have a couple units sat on this hill uh, we'll see how the enemy maneuvers i do want to push over just a tad so we do take the ridge of this hill so that we don't have to worry about any minor uh, line of sight issues there you can see yeah we might just struggle over here we can't see exactly uh, down the hill there um, and we do have something very, very similar on this end over here. We might want to push into the woodland uh, so that we uh, do get some cover and we can fight the cavalry a little more effectively there. We are going to sit out uh, these three units over here, our Swiss uh, grenadiers and a couple battered units of dragoons, simply because it's very, very easy for these uh, dragoons to start l taking casualties. And uh, these uh, grenadiers, while they do perform very well, uh, they have been battered the most, and I want to limit casualties where possible. And I think we can certainly win this battle with what we have deployed here. We do have a massive numerical advantage. So let's press play. And we can see that the enemy is actually very, very close to this hill. We're going to push forwards as quickly as possible. Double time that. Uh, the enemy has actually unlimited their cannons very quickly. Or is that our own bouncing off? That is actually our own bouncing off there. So we're going to have to watch out for that. Let's spread out our fire. Actually, no, concentrate our fire on this massive clump over here. Getting some shots out. That means we absolutely need to uh, move forwards as quickly as possible. Double time around here. We will need to square up. Square up to the enemy, square up to the enemy, give them a good fight. We see actually uh, some general staff uh, charging us in here. Absolutely brilliant. We did set that up just about on time, but um, watching that we neglected this one. Rather silly there, should not have done that so much. But not to worry whatsoever. We can actually curl round over here then to provide support fire. And we will of course move down to flank the enemy properly. But we do have uh, some second general staff over here, so we'll just wait out on there actually. Let's move in down here, provide some more support fire. This should just bring us in range here. May have to watch out. Let's exit our square, shall we? Exit our square, that's the question. Looks like they're going to come back round. Enemies not exactly set up to fire on us here, so we don't need to rush around that. We take a lot of casualties over here. How are we looking? Yet yeah, the enemy does want to uh, move again. So let's push in even harder. We do need to get some range, thank you very much. Take the tree cover there, move around with our cavalry, try and uh, get this general staff who is rousing but not completely shattered. And we may be seeing a retreat for own here. Looks like the enemy is not too sure what it wants to do exactly. Let's make sure our cannons are in fact firing in this massive, massive blob. We will see some uh, friendly fire from us, unfortunately. Let's exit the square here. We can start firing onto the cavalry if they do decide to push up just the tiniest bit there. Looks like they're not going to. We should probably stay in the square. Unfortunate there, but not to worry. 
it's not going to be the end of the world. Push up once again, just the tiniest bit. Now, we're going to have to sacrifice the hill advantage just to get some range. Not to worry though, we have to stop here because we are now in range of the enemy. Turn round, get a better line there. Double time out. Get, um, do we want to charge these chasseur, uh, chasseur cheval? Not necessarily, not necessarily. We What we can do is just move down the hill here, double time that. We could probably get the cannons on uh, these chasseur cheval actually. Make sure we don't get any friendly fire. We're going to be out of sight there. What are we firing at? Massive blob of infantry once again. It's going to be a massive, massive uh, cannon shot there. Absolutely love to see that. We're going to push up and uh, help out our cavalry over here because we might be under threat. So let's pull back. We have some cannoneers, some artillerymen over here. Are we going to be ready to fire right in their face? That is absolutely brutal. And it's not quite enough. Oh, there we go. They are absolutely uh, shattered now, as you should well expect. We're going to pull out. So we need to double time that. Thank you very much. And what we're going to do is we'll stop here. Uh, actually, we'll pull back a tad. Tidy up. And we no longer need the square. Certainly don't need the square. We're going to pull back with this group. Because they've taken enough losses as it is. And there we go, massive downhill volleys over here. That is absolutely brilliant. Into their flanks, they're not too worried about us there. They are firing into our column type over here. So we're going to turn around again. We do have an advantage over there of cover. So what do we want to do now? We want to make sure the enemy doesn't, in fact, uh, return. So these guys aren't actually going to completely exit from the battle. Take the hill there around here we don't need everyone into the center what do we want to do with our cavalry what do we want to do with our cavalry this is only militiamen so I think a good charge will sort them out I want to push in over here what do we see we see some chasseur cheval on our flank let's move out there then and actually try and get some good range down here we'll move over away from our cannons just in case we do get some nasty uh, friendly fire. Then we do have a massive cavalry charge just as the enemy's routing, so that will really force them off the field there. That's excellent. And we'll get onto their cannons, which will be brilliant as well, of course. We do see the enemy, as predicted, trying to return over here, but we are getting in position with three units to help that out. We might want to push up just a tad harder there. Uh, are we in range over here? It appears we might be. We certainly are. Get a fire out by the looks of it. They're readying for it, they're bracing. We are in range. Interesting there. But not to worry, shouldn't be a problem. We need to focus on the centre here, where we have made a mass route. So let's about face over here with our foot and just close the gap here, and we'll be absolutely brilliant. Not so worried about them being winded. Uh, we can absolutely uh, get away with that. So let's make sure everything over here does fully rouse off. We can carry on chasing. They have shattered. That's excellent. Let's pull out of that so we don't take any more losses on the retreat there. And we need to about face over here because we do see some enemies over here on our flank. Just some, uh, actually some Hibernia. Not particularly uh, bad at all. So it would be great if we could wipe these out completely. And there we go, we have completely shattered this flank of grenadiers and such as well. So that was rather an elite um, flank as well with the uh, marineers and uh, the uh, such there. But it is an end of battle, a lovely victory. We'll end that and a heroic victory indeed. Very, very lucky ambush right at the start there. That would be Marshal de Vaux down. Let's have a look at the results. Excellent, we only lost 380 people, that is absolutely nothing. Um, with the enemy re remaining at 225, I'm hoping they can't retreat from that. Being an ambush battle, um, that shouldn't be the case. Let's have a look, shall we? We also have at the end turn a uh, proposal from uh, Prussia asking for a military alliance. Uh, with a lovely little uh, deal sweetener of a thousand gold. We're absolutely going to take that. It does not hurt whatsoever to be uh, in an alliance with Prussia when they themselves are at war with France. Uh, so we can fully create the coalition there. So that's, uh, uh, that 1,000's got absolutely nothing to do with it there. <laughs> Well, um, unfortunately, but not necessarily too badly, uh, the enemy did manage to retreat. There were just a couple battered uh, units there. That does mean, however, we have completely destroyed Marshal de Vaux, um, which is excellent. It did have a second general in there. I would believe that was uh, Rainier, who we saw previously. I didn't actually take the time to look, uh, which is rather silly. We're going to go back to the members club, though. 
uh, and that should provide us with some slightly better um, replenishment. So let's have a look. The roads are the same here. Don't get replenishment from the vineyard, do we? That'd be uh, rather silly. Uh, so we are going to go back to the members club. That gives us uh, coverage over both the coast over here and we can return to the road if need be uh, over the next turn. Unfortunately, we are going to need some better roads to really help us out here. Uh, with this replenishment because that is absolutely terrible. Trait gained plus two to Moran battles with Michael Stoll there. Absolutely brilliant. And we do have some more recruitment and constructions. We have an opera house in Scotland to help with public order and of course um, some growth there. So no one's actually uh, looking at, oh, uh, they might be looking at uh, blockading a port actually over here. Mm, I want to keep blockading Brest over here. Where did that enemy fleet end up? Doesn't look like they've gone northwards. Rather interesting indeed. Okay, well, what else What else we need here? We do need three units now, and that can just be some simple line of issue. What we might do is actually get one use of King's German, uh, one use of Standard. Uh, we can't afford a second or a third Standard there, so we might as well just go for King's German, uh, and that'll do for now. Uh, tell you what we can do, actually, is... What can we do? I think we can recruit, actually, some Black Brunswickers and some Swiss Grenadiers over here. So what we're going to do is, rather than sit around and waste another turn, what we're going to do is cancel that, and we're going to go straight down to Spain here. We are going to bring the Highlanders, that's not a problem. It's really not a problem to bring the Highlanders. Uh, we are going to have to force our way out of this port though. Um, shouldn't be a problem, but what I'm going to do is actually just make sure these guys are disembarked and they are separate from this navy. Are they going to retreat? No, they're not. That's rather interesting. I'd absolutely retreat from this. Uh, chevroned up uh, <laughs> ships of the line against a single tier 2 gunner. Um, we'll make this quick. We do actually get the opportunity to capture that uh, ship, actually. So we'll be taking that to bolster our second minor fleet. And that's absolutely brilliant. So, with that being done, we are absolutely going to pull back. Uh, we're actually going to separate this for now. Bring us over to Portsmouth. And uh, we will press repair on there. So we can get it ready as quickly as possible. Um, Nelson, plus one to command mode, attacking at sea. Absolutely brilliant. Uh, our army is finally going to embark then. That's going to be great. We can get them all on. So we should be able to... Is it going to take two turns? No, we can get down to uh, Pimplona in one turn. Provided there's nothing uh, in this fog of war here. Absolutely isn't. Excellent. Let's just uh, disembark, please. Come on. Come on. No, don't have the movement. Maybe we don't have the movement. Okay, not to worry if we don't. I don't understand why we shouldn't do, though, because uh, we did have the movement. Uh, we've only come from London. Oh, well, uh, if that's just the case, we will only have to wait one more turn. Not to worry there. What we can do, then, is probably start recruiting a little early on here. So we do have some Swiss Grenadiers. Do these have any particular abilities themselves? Uh, they're resistant to morale shocks, uh, but so are the Grenadiers here, and they actually scare enemies. Uh, I wasn't aware of that, so that'd be quite useful. So I'll certainly take one of those. That's brilliant. So, um, actually, actually, do you want to try and sabotage Napoleon, or even can't assassinate him? That's, uh, having said that, I've got a slightly better chance of assassinating him than we do... Uh, Sabotaging the army there. Let's come up here with this agent. 
I do actually see a second army here. That's what I was uh, worried about there. Um, can we reach that one in this turn? Doesn't actually look like it. So, hmm, I don't want to lose this agent. That's the problem there. Try and get in some experience then by sabotaging this army. And that is successful. So that will help towards any future uh, uh, experience earned there. Just that minor action. Not that this uh, particular army is any threat at the moment. Um, but that will help later on. Do we have any traits over here? Um, better a jeweling with swords. Not particularly useful at the moment, to be honest. Um, so we'll have to leave that one there. Um, I don't believe uh, the enemy will be able to uh, make us over in time to uh, hurt us, but not to worry otherwise. We do have uh, two armies in this area now. We actually have uh, another agent available over here, so we're going to certainly put that in our only uh, university. What does he help with exactly? Uh, industrial and civil technologies. That has uh, pushed me further really to go for uh, land drainage for the wealth from farms, which is very, very useful indeed. But I would absolutely love logistics right now because that's gone down to four turns in total, all the way down from eight, I believe it was earlier. Uh, we have, of course, got a national census, which is great. We have these Swiss grenadiers in Catalonia. New nation rises, Wurzenberg. <laughs> Our old friends from our Austrian campaign have come back. Um, which is not fun at all. We're going to work garrison over here. Keep up that bloody French Navy there. And we will reinforce our Navy here. First things first is make sure we can uh, disembark here. And that was, of course, the problem is just the lack of movement. Rather interesting there because uh, the uh, army only came from London, didn't particularly use up any uh, movement. But not to worry, because that means we can come back around. We do have a second army here properly now. Uh, can't see Napoleon's army anywhere, which is rather a bother. Very scary indeed. Should we come round here? Can see everything over here. That does suggest to me they might be moving in these mountains, actually. Let's move up here. And he has actually gone towards France, which is very, very good for us indeed. Let's move over to this one. Can we sabotage that? Probably not worth the risk here, unfortunately. What about assassination? Not really worth the risk there either, which is rather a shame. What about sabotaging? We 50% over here. Mm, what about on the depot? Let's. Oh, it's 40% on the depot. That's interesting because that doesn't have a garrison there. Uh, okay. Well, what's Spain up to? Don't know if that's the problem. Don't know what Spain's up to. So that means. I think we want to come down and spy on them again, really. I'm down there. We do have the size of uh, Bordeaux here. I'd love to know what we're doing uh, in the flanks there. So that's all good. Now that we do have Wellesley over here, we can spend the time to actually uh, make sure we are, you know, just uh, replenishing properly over here. Uh, we have still got them on exempt from taxes, so we don't want that anymore. Just double checking over here. And that's brought our income up to 6.8 thousand. That's absolutely amazing at this stage of the campaign. Uh, so what do we actually want to spend our money on is the question. Not entirely sure is the answer. Uh, so what can we do over at the homeland to help us out? Actually, to really help us out, we could upgrade our roads to help with that replenishment. Uh, magistrates would not be a bad idea. Uh, really, the vineyard would be excellent to help with that happiness and uh, greater wealth in Navarra. But I'm going to work with the assumption we're going to slip up at some point and actually lose that uh, before we're able to hold on to Spain. So, over here, might want to upgrade our opera house once again. Or, might just want to get some sort of semblance of a navy going over here. So, we're actually going to go for... Hmm, I think we get a Razzi, because I like Razzis. And we're going to going to upgrade the magistrates in Cardiff over here just to make sure we do get that extra uh, bonus of tax and such, just because uh, that's going to be a very nice income for us. Um, you know, it's going to be solid, but can't really take away from that too easily. Uh, just takes our dependency from trade away, just that marginal amount more, which is great. So there's not much else we can do this turn, unfortunately. Uh, what about technology swapping? Is anyone going to offer anything decent? Could go for conscription uh, to help us out there. 
or division of labor could go for both of those give them uh, improved coppering and classic economics uh, what do they say to that so they say yes that is excellent that saves us a good few turns what's about russia mm, poverty control laws <laughs> Imagine Russia in this particular time period getting poverty control laws. Um, Alexander III's a, a bit of a way there, a um, bit of a way away. We'll get them conscription and uh, improve coppering because the famous Russian Navy always needs help. Uh, <laughs> we might actually be able to get a minor payment off of that. Let's actually go for 500 uh, there. Just a bit minor, but it will certainly help us out. They say, yes, excellent stuff. Uh, whenever that happens, I wish we could would have bargained a bit harder. Um, what about the Osmans? Let's do some cheeky uh, trade with the Osmans. Get, get bottling and canning, uh, because that will reduce our naval upkeep. And we get land drainage, because we were hoping for that anyway. Once again, help out the uh, Osman Navy. And we'll not help them out too much. Let's get classical economics for them. Uh, do we want to try and get some more money off of them as well? We can demand another 500. Why not? Mm, they said no. So it's just a technology for now. And oh, we might actually sweeten that with uh, poverty control laws. Uh, they still say no. That's rather interesting. Well, I'm not going to pay them any money. Uh, <laughs> let's, go to, uh, let's go to Prussia. We can get logistics off of them. Absolutely. And bottling and canning. I'm giving them everything I have. I love Prussia if we can do this. Um, does not give it its uh, for it's therefore no, 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 no again. Okay, maybe then uh, we'll just take logistics and we'll give them everything there. They said no once again. This is guessing. This is guessing. Guessing rather, rather because logistics is amazing. I imagine they know that too then. Uh, what about some spicy military access for 20 turns? Uh, we'll offer that up. Uh, they said no. Okay, well that's the last time we're going to try. We're not going to push it. Um, that's rather unlucky. That will set us back a few turns. Um, but it's very much needed because that will really push our uh, replen up to a very acceptable level there. Not much else we can do this turn though. So we're going to push on and see where this particular army moves, I think. Well, it appears uh, the they are rather interested in moving about uh, down here. We might try and sabotage. That's 39%. I don't want to risk losing uh, any agents over here. Let's go for sabotaging this army. And that has been successful. So that should mean they can't move the reinforcements there, which is good for us. We do actually have a little bit of movement. Just going to double check here. Okay, so we do still have this army over here. Rather unlucky there then. What we might want to do is lay an ambush where possible. Uh, we can actually lay an ambush here and that will protect the road over to Pamplona. We can actually reinforce ourselves there with this unit. Excellent. Uh, what can we recruit here? Anything particularly nice? Not really. That's unfortunate. And uh, upgrading there is not going to help. Um, George Alvin so more command with frigates, not to worry, we get our great estates in Yorkshire and the magistrates in Dublin. Well, let's move back up. Might want to raid trade routes, but I'm not seeing any particular raid value from that. Uh, only 390, so something perhaps a little more valuable if we move up. We might just want to blockade uh, Antwerp over here. And there we go, there's the famous Russian Navy actually helping out in Rotterdam. <laughs> so we don't necessarily need to blockade over here, we just need to raid that. Um, and uh, we are going to raid over here. Is that telling us what we're guessing? Is that saying nothing? That really is nothing we're guessing from that, that's rather interesting. Not much else we could do about that though. Let's probably should have gone for La Havre over here because that is a military dockyard. And we'll use our money to very quickly make some, uh, we want some Swiss Grenadiers, I think, again. And we're going to, are we going to upgrade? I'm not particularly worried about upgrading the ordnance at the moment. Uh, quite a long way of getting off of mortars. Um, it would be a good idea to upgrade the port over here because it's an empty slot. Uh, we do have enough trade ports already, so we're going to go for another... Um, Military dockyard, are we? I believe these do give us some actual wealth standardly, so we're going to go for another trading port because we don't need any more than two 
uh, you know, true military dockyards over here. Uh, and we're going to upgrade the factory over here now that we do have poverty control laws. And that will open up the next tier of uh, industrial technology later on. It's quite the investment at seven turns and 3,600 uh, gold there. So we are going to do that while we can. Not too bothered at the moment about the stud farm. That's only a very minor uh, increase to wealth and discount on cavalry. That's really not going to affect us too much, I don't think. So we do keep some money in the bank this turn. Uh, and that's exactly what we want. Very, very slowly replenishing over here. Uh, it might actually just be quicker to recruit some more Swiss line um, and actually bolster up our defences like that. And actually the Swiss line would be better than the standard foot which we're really hoping to replenish. So we're going to do that. Um, so we'll do that and we'll actually keep the Swiss Grenadiers uh, in Michael Stahl's army because I believe uh, Arthur Wellesley doesn't need any uh, bonuses there. We do have a pretty de damn decent army as it stands. Uh, and I think we'll try and get one more battle and hopefully uh, Jacques Lauriston over here with his massive amounts of Colonne attack and of course huge amounts of artillery. Double check uh, what Spain's up to. Don't see anything nasty at the moment, do we? No, we don't. They're just uh, replenishing over here. And we'll make sure they stay like that. We will sabotage, I think, go for their military building, of course. Of course. And that will pretty much be it for this turn as well, I think. Well, we have an opportunity to intercept here rather than ambush. You can see it's going to be our garrison being reinforced by uh, Wellesley over here. What I want to go for is I'm going to go for the opportunity to ambush. If they do press uh, Navarra, we'll get the opportunity to attack and have this exact same battle. Uh, we should do anyway. Um, so we're gonna we're gonna decline that for now. I think. Yeah, we'll do that. And that has actually turned into an ambush. It was pushed us back, I think, a little bit, but not to worry. There's still an ambush. Um, so that's excellent. They are actually a tad hurt themselves. And we can see some um, Grenadier et Cheval over here, some uh, very, very heavy cavalry to contend with. We have to watch out for that, but we should be fairly okay here. Okay, so before we press start once again, it's very, very similar setup to the previous ambush battle. However, we can actually see how the enemy has deployed beforehand. The reason for this is simply because uh, the Duke of Wellington does have a greater amount of command stars uh, rating than the enemy general there. So the idea of that is you can actually uh, deploy second and see what the enemy's up to before you decide what to do for yourself. So we have our light cavalry on this particular flank over here. The idea is to uh, charge our light cavalry into the cannons when possible. We're probably going to be very reactive with our cavalry though because I don't think our heavy can uh, stand up to their hussars and uh, their grenadier their cheval over there, which is gonna be rather problematic. Also somewhat unfortunate, there's not a particularly decent position to set up our cannons uh, without the risk of friendly fire ourselves. This is probably the best lookout we're going to have. Uh, you can see we're probably just about going to be firing over our men over there. Um, but otherwise we're going to be looking at setting up over here. And uh, once there is a small dip in the ground here, but it does rise up once again when we uh, close the distance to the enemy. And we're just going to make sure that we uh, close them off with our skirmishers over here who will uh, advance uh, you know, as a third line uh, when we, after we sandwich the enemy where possible. So let's press play. Uh, press pause very quickly because we're going to do that properly. Uh, we'll just uh, take this, move up where we can just to watch out for the enemy line infantry. Try and stay around here. We'll double time that of course and we'll do the same on this side. Try mixing our um, elite infantry and such. We have grouped up over here so they know who is where. Has that actually moved them there? Mm, doesn't look like it has. Uh, tell what, let's ungroup that and do that again. There we go, that's worked, excellent stuff. Let's move in. And there we go, so we're gonna start moving now so that we do get some help over there. We're gonna hide in the trees over here with our light. We are firing up with our cannons, counter-battering at the moment, not a problem now. That is actually going to get some secondary shots into their um, horse guards there, which we are going to have to watch out over here, actually, uh, for the enemy cavalry. So, mm, double time there. 
keeping the grenadiers over here to protect our cannons because we're very, very open there, of course. We aren't quite double timing, unfortunately. Let's guess our cannons actually are onto the enemy cavalry. Guess onto the general staff there. Make sure we are pushing as hard as possible. We're just about guessing position here. However, how are we doing over here? Look at that. Absolutely brilliant. That is going to make them question that. Let's come around to the flank there. Somewhat harder support. And we are finally in range over here. Getting a lovely fire by rank out there. Excellent stuff. Look at that. Into their general as well. He has already lost a few men there. Uh, once again, the enemy formation, not entirely sure what it wants to do. Maybe we should get some canister shots. We're not quite an optimum range for that, though. So we're going to stick to round and go for his uh, Grenadier Cheval. We're going to have to curl round over here because we're nowhere near in position, actually. Nowhere near in position to really batter the enemy, as ever. It looks like the enemy general is going to uh, charge right into us there. So I'll take that. Absolutely take that. Bring that up. Might want to turn around with our grenadiers a tad better here. So we can fire out onto that cavalry. Get some canister shots out now, and that will wreck the enemy where we do need to square up here because they're threatening a charge. Very, very limp contact there. And we're going to have to push up to support there because we're going to get overwhelmed by the infantry, which we've not pressed on properly there at all. Going to move in over to the trees and get that minor hill advantage as well. Double time that. So we'll keep some fairly thick lines on at the moment, so not to worry there. Massive canister shots out onto this cavalry. That's excellent. That's absolutely excellent. So we did miss this cavalry charge, which is rather a shame. Stop here so that we don't engage melee contact there. We can actually shoot the cavalry as they retreat there. Mm, just make sure we're tidying up our lines then over here. We'll ignore this over here. I think we'll be fine on that. The cavalry can't stand in that engagement for too long. Come back to round shots over here and actually fire us onto the enemy um, infantry where we can. Take the hill over there, protect our cavalry. Looks like we are about in range over here. We're about to fire out with our royal fusiliers over here. Excellent stuff. Go for the Hibernia by the looks of things. Why are our men running? Is this the cavalry charge over here? It certainly is. That's rather unlucky. That is rather unlucky indeed. So the, uh, shot oh, it's the Grenadier Cheval, that would be wide. Okay, let's move out over here. Try and shoot them in the back. That was rather, rather uh, silly over there. Let's chase down their French Assars though. And really take the hill over here to fire onto the enemy there. Let's get our cavalry, mm, not to worry too much actually over there at the moment. What we'll want to do is really focus the enemy infantry to be honest, because we're not doing that properly. And we've been given the mercy that they're not too short to do themselves. And they haven't actually set up whatsoever either. Just a very limp walk to us with their conscripts actually. Double time with our Swiss Grenadiers. Take the hill, fire out onto the militia and Swiss line down here. We are getting some very nice shots actually with our cannons. No need to worry about the uh, any uh, friendly fire there at all. That's great. And have we cleaned up the flank over here? We certainly have. Uh, we have returned, but that's a lot of losses. We'll sit out them. And what we'll do is bring just one unit over here, I think, is needed. Push up over here. Watch out for our cannons. That is actually glancing into our men there, so we'll stop that. We don't need them. They're not particularly needed for this battle. And what we'll do is we'll just chase down the conscripts and such with our cavalry. Make sure that they don't escape. We're reloading, taking some shots from their own grenadiers.
Well, we are absolutely guessing that. We do need to uh, be very careful with our light cavalry, though. There, that has just strayed a little too far into the enemy formation. We do see some conscripts deciding to come back. That's very good of the conscripts, even though they are very, very tired. They do have the uh, spirit of the, the Grand Arme there. Uh, to help them out and to uh, really encourage them to come back but we are absolutely smashing this sense now we can see a mass route possibly happening and so we do have uh, this unit with clawed attack a massive morale shock there which is absolutely brilliant we were at risk of losing quite a lot of our swiss grenadiers simply because we were under fire from a lot of enemies at once of course we have made contact with the uh, conscripts we could have split off over here to make sure the swiss line doesn't come back so that'd be very very nasty indeed we have completely routed off and shattered everything else here, though they're not coming back. So it is just this uh, clawed attack in the elite Hibernia, which you would absolutely expect them to uh, hold up there. Uh, they are the elite infantry, of course. Are we in range to help ours over here? No, we're not. So we do need to push up, of course. Always a little shocked as to uh, the very mild range here, uh, for, as compared to other games. This. It's not in a square, so we're actually going to charge in with our light cavalry there. Just the one unit will work. Go make sure this, these fusiliers over here do stay rousing. Actually, we'll pincer that with our heavy cavalry because they're just going to push into our main formation there otherwise and take some friendly damage. And of course, uh, as we know from Murphy's Law, friendly fire isn't. And that is a very, very nice charge there. That would be a little bit uh, for them to worry about. So that will actually be the morale shot to start them rousing. And we're going to clear up over here, make sure we do finish everyone off. And that will be absolutely brilliant. It's just this one unit of Hibernia once again. So we're going to make sure we come from the enemy's flank there. But they are actually uh, rousing it now, and that's excellent. So they are shattered. So we're going to just carry on chasing down units so when we do get the end battle message there. And uh, I'll just see you at the results screen. Well, um... Bloodier than our previous ambush, of course. We did lose 627 men, but absolutely not to worry. We have left more enemies remaining at 473, but that is, once again, a major French army completely dealt with there, as far as we're concerned. So that's excellent. That's keeping Navarra completely safe. We'll just wait for the end turn here now. So, how does that leave us looking? Well... We have uh, beaten back two full French stacks, pretty much, uh, and that's excellent. We just have Bryce Molyneux over here now. Um, very nice name, actually, is uh, Molyneux. Uh, so, minor French stack over here. Might want to try and sabotage that. Going to try at 56%. And that has absolutely worked. That's excellent. And actually, I've got some young guard there, as well as the Swiss Grenadiers. They're absolutely terrible, the young guard. Not terrible in themselves, terrible to fight, of course. Very, very scary for us at this stage of the game. Uh, we are going to recruit. Can't recruit any more cavalry, so we're going to get some... Uh, I think we'll get some Black Brunswickers up to reinforce over here. I do apologise if you can hear some sirens outside. Someone's being a naughty boy by the sounds of it. Apologies, but uh, yeah, so what we're going to do is just garrison inside of Pamplona with Wellesley here. That might, that's not really helping out our uh, replenishment whatsoever. That just emphasizes how we need the roads and logistics to come up, of course. So now that I'm a lot more confident we can take uh, solid control of Navarra, we are going to upgrade the wine estate. So that'll take eight turns, but that will certainly pay back. We have the dry dock in England, which is excellent. That means we can get some very nasty ships out ourselves. And plus one to morale um, for Arthur Wellesley and his army. That's excellent. So uh, I think that is going to be it for today, ladies and gentlemen. Um, that has been uh, quite the nice episode, I do believe. That's been a very, very nice couple of ambushes to protect our borders over here and to make sure we are in a solid position uh, against Spain and Spain. France over here. We are just going to finish off by trying to sabotage the building over here. That actually being executed. So we're going to leave on some bad news there, of course, but not to worry. So thank you once again to everyone who has been watching. That is going to be the end of the video. That is unfortunately all we have time for today. So I shall see you in the future. May all of your nights and days be auspicious. Goodbye.